Collins. Um, I'm a Lehman College undergraduate. Hello, my name is Britta Brown. I am, I hail from Lehman College of the Bronx, New York. Um, we're here to do um, a study that will provide better information for seismic hazards. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been selected to be science researchers for a project here in Haiti. Um, this project will involve the community of Haiti as well as um, the Haitian University. Our collaborations with their um, professors um, hope to bring a safer community or establish information that will allow them to be prepared for the next um, natural disaster. It's all very uh, positive and we're, we're, we're going to focus our efforts on seeing the silver lining in Haiti. And I'm Heather Sloan. I am a professor in the Department of Earth, Environmental, and Geospatial Sciences at Lehman College, City University of New York. I'm also the co-chief scientist for Project Lake Aziri here in Haiti. And we're here to survey the bottom of the lake using sonar uh, and different seismic techniques, uh, as well as to take some core samples so that we can date any features that we see in the seismic data. The reason we're doing this is because Haiti is a region that's prone to earthquakes. It sits right on a plate boundary, the boundary between the North American and the Caribbean plate. And in 2010, there was a very, very large earthquake here that did a tremendous amount of damage, uh, mostly in the city of Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti. Uh, but there were parts of the fault that did not rupture. Notably, here at uh, the part that runs through the region that we're mapping in. And so understanding the earthquake hazard here is part of our goal, part of our objective in mapping the structures beneath the lake. And maybe as you can see behind us, we have these high mountains. And behind, <laughs> in front of us, we have another chain of high mountains. And essentially, this whole area is freezing, coming together. So there's a very high seismic risk. And they're coming together with a sheer motion. So our project is about understanding it by going underwater, imaging the structures which we can image much better than on land. That's, it's all coming together. <laughs> As we once said, everything seems to come together even though it doesn't look like it will. And we've kind of nicknamed the project In the Nick of Time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. IPAC software actually has a lot of functionalities for planning surveys um, okay. and planning survey lines. 
So you load it up, it knows where this map is in geographic space. So it's like, oh, okay, this is, this is in Haiti. So I can draw lines on top of it that have geographic information with them. So it knows where my start and end points are uh, in space. <laughs> Alright, so we're placing the primary antenna uh, on the roof of the uh, boat here. So we have to very carefully measure uh, the back of the boat forward to find the right position and then we'll be in good shape. The reason why we do that is it allows us to take that positional information and translate it to the locations of our streamers and, uh, and our source position. So we're about to test out our multi-channel streamer for the first time here on Lake Asbury in Haiti. No, it's easy to get it into the water. Just feed it back to right here. Little by little here. Okay, so what we just did, we just put in the water the yep. seismic sauce, so. So which will give a... Every second of that, we will hear it go. And uh, the big green uh, tube is actually uh, contains 24 hydrophones that would listen from the echoes from the lake bed. And it's all registered, registered in the back of the boat on the laptops, and it's yep. a signal we'll process later. But we'll get some kind of imagery already on the back of the boat. And, um, it's going to work. <laughs> so. my understanding of how science works through scientific collaboration, through studying data, through the hard work of going out to collect data, learning how to collect data, learning how to process data. It was so much that, you know, I was like a fly in the wall, able and close enough to listen and watch and also be a part of when I could extend a hand. So I think more students need to try things like this or go abroad and study or learn just cultural exchange information, more international scientific collaboration will bring more understanding and things that future teachers like myself and Britta Brown can translate and transition into our classrooms. This is something that I, no one can take away with always be with me. I'm more than proud to be a part of this project. Um, myself and Britta worked very hard for these past three weeks. <laughs> no, it's been excellent. Now I'm going to walk to this camera. I'm going to turn it on Britta Brown so you can make sure oh. we're here at the same time. Yeah. Hello. Wait, Britta. No, not, not you, Paul. Wait, Britta. <laughs> How was that? Was it? Oh, no. You said wonderful thing. 